All right, you are looking at the Mighty Live 9, and this course is called 103, Recording MIDI and MIDI Effects for Mac Pro Video. My name's Bill Burgess. And what the hell is MIDI, and why do I care? Musicians have always had a problem, and that is that when somebody says, oh, what do you do? You say, oh, I'm in music. And they always say, oh, my Uncle Bob plays in a band. And in order to separate yourself from all the Uncle Bobs of the world, we began a long journey, but it started way back. So what is this? This is a example of some of the earliest manuscripts available. It's from like the 1200s, I believe. This is Gregorian chant. And you see these little symbols right here? These are notation. And that notation is basically saying, hey, I've heard that these guys up in, you know, some Irish cathedral up here can really, you know, sing good, but I just don't believe it. And so the guys in the Irish cathedral say, damn, man, we better write this stuff down so people believe we do music. That's notation. Uh, Mozart had the same thing. He's like, he's Mozart, right? But unless he can get his music to other people, nobody's going to believe it unless they happen to see him play. We have the same problem here down in the 21st century. Same damn problem. We've got to be able to be tangible in our music and show other people that we actually are better than Uncle Bob. All right, so fast forwarding a bit, and this is a player piano. After, you know, the drunken piano player doesn't show up in the Old West Saloon for the 50th time, somebody says, well, damn, we just need a piano that'll play itself. And thus, the player piano, why am I showing this? It's MIDI. This is MIDI. Just like the Gregorian chant was MIDI, just like the Mozart stuff was MIDI. It's kind of a form of notation. Right here is the song they punched holes in the paper. When it went past this little roller, it flipped switches and that pulled wires, and these wires went and caused these keys to play. All right, so player piano. Fast forward to the late 80s. It's the same thing. This is Gregorian chant, Wolfgang Mozart, player piano, drunken piano player, and now this guy. He still has the same problem. Nobody believes I can really do music. And so he, in his garage, he's got all these keyboards, many of which I've owned myself. I just sold one of these right here. All this stuff had to be linked together via what? MIDI. And every synthesizer in here talked to each other via MIDI. All right, now we fast forward to where we're at now. We have just a massive amount of keyboards, control surfaces, DJ workstations, you know, um, post-production interfaces, um, you know, foot controllers, trigger fingers, all of it, you know, DJ pads. It goes on and on, right? And all this is done via what? MIDI. So MIDI actually is the most important musical advance in the last four or five hundred years, probably. These are MIDI notes. You can hear the different tonalities, and we can see that there's chords moving along, and that the chords have durations, and furthermore, that those durations have loudness. Like, these are velocity stocks. Velocity means how hard you hit it. So in context, let's watch a player piano Ableton Live style. Okay, there it is. It's nothing more than a player piano. Just like the Old West, okay? And it's being talked to via what? MIDI. All right, now this happens to be from native instruments, and the only reason I chose that is because it has this keyboard. MIDI does a few things. It controls notes, the velocity and the duration. So basically it's saying, are you playing a C or a C sharp? Are you playing a D or an F? And then it says, how hard are you hitting that chord? And by the way, how long are you holding your fingers down? Okay, now just because I'm talking in keyboard terms doesn't mean anything. You can use in Ableton Live or in synthesizers or whatever, MIDI can control drum modules and all other kinds of stuff. Fair enough? All right, so notes, the velocity, the duration, which means how hard and how long. The other thing that it 
controls MIDI is musicality. Basically, it's been said that a Steinway piano reveals incompetence. If I walk up to a Steinway and sit down and play, the instrument itself will, sh will speak loud and clear that I don't know what I'm doing. But if a master walks up to a Steinway, the instrument will reveal brilliance. Okay, why? It's how the guy touches everything about that instrument. It's how he touches the sustain pedal on the floor. It's the duration of his notes, the volume of his notes, etc. And in a synthesizer setting, in a modern music setting, it also involves pitch bend, like a guitarist bending a string. Uh, modulation. There's often a modulation wheel on keyboards and most USB MIDI controllers. And you can push this up and wiggle the sound and pull it down and unwiggle it. Same thing, ribbon controllers. There's a ribbon controller on uh, Ableton's new push. It's just a piece of plastic, and if you zip your finger along it while you're playing a note, things happen. Korg stuff has famous XY pads. You wiggle your finger around in a circle, stuff happens. Volume changes. Filter cutoffs. This basically means, is the sound sharp or is it dull? This is a big mainstay in dance music where you start out with a dull sound and you build it up to a sharp sound. This is a MIDI control change. All this stuff, EQ sweeps. Uh, dubstep is built on LFO settings. An LFO is a low frequency oscillator. Don't get scared about that. It's nothing more than, hey, when I click this button on, wiggle the sound, and it wiggles it based on a certain electronic wave. Those are control changes. And MIDI also conveys rhythmic feel. So arpeggiators, you know, uh, we'll get into this, but it's basically, hey, I'm going to click this on, and you're going to act like, uh, you know, you're doing a lot with your left hand. Or quantizing, like, uh, if I quantize my MIDI here, you're going to act like I knew what I was doing when I my real feel wasn't so good. And then timeline-based events. Um, when Ableton starts and when it stops, it's it's conveying MIDI to all the instruments in the session. Uh, when you're working with a DJ controller and you have certain locators in a song picked and you press a button and it goes to that thing, that's a timeline-based event. And all of this comes off the hard disk of your computer. Okay, So rhythmic feel and timeline events. Now, MIDI is just a very basic language. It is not uh, the player piano itself. It's the it's the role, okay? This role has no sound in it, and this player piano has no role in it, okay? They're different things. So if you wanted to collaborate, you know, via telephone, iPhone, to a buddy who's got Ableton Suite in London, and you didn't have any bandwidth, because uh, one of the other of you is in prison or something, then you would build Ableton sessions with just MIDI instruments. And then all you would be doing is sending these small little files of this roll along. And But if you included audio, then it gets heavy lifting. Then it starts being a lot of uh, megabytes. So you're not dragging a piano around. It's MIDI. All right, so enough said about MIDI. Let's look at how Ableton Live deals with MIDI. That's all we care about.